Welcome to Heritage Stories, Visionaries, Experimenters, created by Freedom's Way National Heritage Area. Each story introduces an inspiring individual whose actions, discoveries, and inventions have shaped the social, intellectual, and cultural innovation in Freedom's Way and America, changing the way in which Americans viewed the world. They made a difference. I'm your narrator, Chuck Arning of Lunenburg. Today's story is Harry Hansen Robinson, mill girl, suffragist, and author. From the crowded factory floors of Lowell, Massachusetts, to the national stage, Harriet Hansen Robinson began her life as a mill operative and died a respected author and a woman suffrage advocate. An avid learner, passionate reformer, Robinson worked her way into the history books, not only by making history, but by recording it. Harriet was born in Boston to Harriet Brown and William Hansen on February 8th of 1825. When Harriet was just six years old, her father died leaving her mother a widow with four small children. Four years later, the family moved to Lowell, Massachusetts, a city on a meteorotic rise. By the 1830s, Lowell was a leading economic and innovative force in America's journey to industrialization. The city's textile factories employed and housed thousands of local women known as the Mill Girls. Harriet's mother became a boarding house keeper at the Tremont Mills to support the family cooking and cleaning for about 25 to 40 mill girls every day. However, it was still difficult for the family to make ends meet. Harriet began working the mills to supplement their income. One year after coming to Lowell, the city erupted to a full-blown strike, or turnout, as the women then called it. Around 1,200 women left the factory in the middle of the workday, protesting a considerable increase in the cost of boarding house rent. This was one of the earliest strikes in American history. It was orchestrated entirely by women. Later in life, Harriet would become known for her observations on life in Lowell during this period. But she was more than an observer. She was also a participant. According to her own account in the book Loom and Spindle, when the women on Harriet's floor got word that the strike had begun, they hesitated. No one would step up to lead the charge. In her telling, at just 11 years old, Harriet rose up saying, I don't care what you do. I am going to turn out whether anyone else does or not. She then led the other mill girls out of the factory. Along with many others, Harriet lost her job that day and her housing. The corporation terminated Harriet's mother as well, and the family had to relocate to another mill complex. This is not the end of their work with the mills, however. Harriet, her mother, and brother would work for other corporations over the next decade to make ends meet. Harriet also had the opportunity to learn while in Lowell. Aspiring for more in life, she attended night classes at a local competitive high school, and brought books and poetry to read while at work. She even wrote for the Lowell Offering, a popular and well-reviewed collections of poetry and short stories published by other mill girls like herself. It was Harriet's creativity and skill that would bring her and her future husband together. William Stevens Robinson, a journalist and abolitionist, wrote a poem Harriet had written about the passing of her younger brother. Impressed, he wanted to meet the author. The two married at 1848 and ultimately settled in Malden, Massachusetts, where Harriet then spent the rest of her life. While her husband's political career was on the rise, Harriet returned to activism. Inspired by speeches by Julia Ward Howe and others in New England Women's Club, Harriet began lobbying for women's suffrage in 1868. One of her primary efforts was fundraising for the cause, an activity that gave her life renewed purpose. Harriet even worked with Howe, establishing a Malden chapter of the New England Women's Club. Another one of Harriet's compatriots was Lucy Stone, a leader in the Massachusetts Women's Suffrage Association. For almost a decade, they worked together on their shared cause until a misunderstanding over Stone's speaking fees led to a falling out between the Robinsons, Stone, and her husband, Henry Blackwell. Unable to reconcile, the Robinsons aligned themselves with the rival National Women of Suffrage Association, led by Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Susan B. Anthony. While working with the National Women's Suffrage Association, Harriet completed Massachusetts and the Women's Suffrage Movement and accounting the state's suffrage efforts. This 1881 book provides a detailed account of suffrage efforts in the state, notably without the activities of Lucy Stone. Harriet continued to write over the next few decades, and in 1890, she published Loom and Spindle, or Life Among the Early Mill Girls, a largely biographical work. This book is an important source of not just Harriet's life, but the stories of other mill girls and the labor movements they were part of 
a half a century earlier. Howard also wrote plays, short stories, and children's literature, but it was her years as an operative that grew more precious at, to her as time went on. Recalling the strike that took place in her childhood, Harriet wrote, As I looked back at the long line that followed me, I was more proud than I have ever been since that any success I may have achieved, and more proud than I should ever be again until my beloved state gives to women, citizens, the right of suffrage. Writing and fighting for suffrage until the end, Harriet Hanson Robson died on December 22, 1911, eight years prior to the passage of the 19th Amendment, granting women the right to vote. As we commemorate the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment, we remember women such as Harriet, who did not live to see it pass. We also pay tribute to her legacy, which is now largely remembered in her writing. By providing compelling accounts of life during America's journey towards industrialization and the fight for expanded voting rights, Harriet Hanson Robinson's words continue to inform our vision of history. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Heritage Stories. Each story provides insight into the lives of individuals who were born or lived within Freedom's Way National Heritage Area and were shaped in some way or another by their time here. These are individuals who made a difference and were at the forefront of social, intellectual, and cultural innovations that relate to new things or ideas that the world, or at least Americans, had never seen before, proving enormously influential on American culture making Freedom's Way a region of firsts in American invention, thought, and design. To learn more, please visit us today at freedomsway.org and let us know what you think.